Hi, I'm Congressman Joe Morelli. This year marks the 10th open enrollment period under the Affordable Care Act, which provides affordable coverage for millions of Americans and thousands of people back here in my home of Rochester, New York. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who works so hard at making sure there's awareness of the open enrollment period and help people get the kind of coverage that they need for themselves and their families. I also want to give a big uh, thank you to Young Invincibles. Uh, your partnership has been so important uh, to everyone who's working hard at making sure quality, affordable health care is uh, available to every American. So thanks for everything you do. God bless you. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the last session of the day. You made it. You all navigated Zoom events uh, successfully. So thank you all for again bearing with us. Um, welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have you. This is Finding Your Footing of Sister Basics 101. Um, I think I know a lot of you by now, but if we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Mina Schultz. I'm the Health Policy and Advocacy Manager here at Young Invincibles. We are so excited to share this session with you today. Um, we've had great demand uh, for more content around learning the ropes as a new assister. Uh, so in this session, that's what we're going to do. We're, we've got two incredible speakers who are going to discuss um, what to expect when you're newly coming into this role. So we have navigator Stacy Thompson with Change Happens in Texas, uh, who's been doing this work for many, many years, and she brings great energy. So you guys watch out. Um, and she's going to be talking with Zach Reed, uh, a navigator with Ohio Association of Food Banks. So these are two amazing navigators. They're going to give you a picture of what it's like getting a program going and doing this work for the first time. Um, and we hope that from this conversation, you'll get a better understanding of what goes into to getting off the ground in outreach and enrollment. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, if you have questions for Zach and Stacy, put those in the Q&A box. Um, and definitely keep the conversation going in the chat as well. We love to see it. Um, so yeah, with that, I'll hand it over to you, Stacy. Thanks, Mina. Hello, back. Okay, guys, now we're about to wake you back up. We know we've, you've been here for a little while. And as Mina um, stated, I am Stacy Thompson with Change Happens. I am the Navigator Program Coordinator, and I have been here since the inception. And wow, Zach. We are actually in OE10. What? I'm still excited. What about you, Zach? Um, I'm excited. How do I match your energy, Stacey? I'm excited too. Okay, I love it. Thank you, Zach. Zach, never worry, don't worry about me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to bring enough energy for the both of us in this section. Um, but here, I'll just tell you right a little bit about Change Happens. We are a nonprofit social services community-based organization here in Houston, Texas. We service 59 counties all the way up on up to Texarkana, all the way down to Galveston, Texas. So we service a lot of area here in the, um, the great state of big Texas. Um, but Zach, um, for this section, I just want to talk and you and I can have natural dialogue. There's not, that's not 400 people watching us. It's just you and I here. Um, what ab about becoming a brand new um, navigator um, grantee um, already done with the first year? You made it to the first year of the three-year grant. Yeah. So how, um, go ahead and introduce yourself and um, just let the people know a little bit about your organization. Stacy, I'm Zach Reed. I'm the Director of Health Initiatives at Ohio Association of Food Banks. We uh, are a membership organization that represents the 12 Feeding America food banks in the state of Ohio. Uh, our Navigator program serves 77 out of 88 counties with about 47 navigators across the state. We're a consortium model, so we're a lead applicant, and then we have eight sub-grantees that work on our program. Oh, now I know why they matched us, because we, our numbers almost look the same. We have about nine sub-grantees here in um, the state of Texas. We're actually located in Houston, Texas, uh, where I tell everybody everything, we do, do everything big in Texas. We couldn't have had one sub-guarantee, we had to have nine and over almost 50 um, 
navigators who are being trained right now. So you know what time of year we're at because you've got to year one. Just let me know, um, Zach, what made your organization actually want to begin to do the, um, the outreach and enrollment for the um, navigator program? Yeah, so the Ohio Association of Food Banks um, is focused on food insecurity and hunger, but we know that hunger is a symptom of poverty and that to lift people from poverty, there has to be a wraparound set of resources available to people, particularly when it comes to healthcare, because as we all know, um, an unexpected health emergency, an injury or an illness can put a family um, in a really difficult financial situation. And for people without many resources before that happens, um, it, can, it can be even more severe. Um, so the association works through our member food banks to make sure people have access to SNAP, to heating assistance, to medical assistance, and the ACA Navigator Grant was an extension of that. Uh, in the state of Ohio, about 8% of our population is um, uninsured, and so we have a large need here, um, and we again saw this as a way to help close some of that gap here in the state here. So we're actually happy that you all came aboard and just joined in on this work. Um, it seems like you already was doing some of the boots on the ground work and just added this as another tool to help the communities um, that you all were already helping. Um, what about uh, even with the grant funding? Uh, I know when we came from the beginning, when the grant funding was nice, and then we came from the middle part <laughs> when the grant funding was like, okay, now what are we going to do with this? But we made it work. How about you all coming into this um, OE, well, I guess OE9, because we're talking about the year just passed. Um, what about, what did you think about the grant funding, even OE9 or and this new grant year? Yeah, so I guess one part I left out of that last answer is that from 2013 to 2017, the Ohio Association of Food Banks was a navigator grantee. Um, Welcome back. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but when when uh, there was that significant funding cut in, uh, what was that, 2017, 2018 grant year, yeah. um, the Ohio Association and our consortium of organizations came together and said, you know what, we can't do it. Our model will not work with this level of funding and pulled out. Um, so when the funding became available again, like my executive director likes to say, we brought the band back together, uh, put together an application. I wish I could say it was like riding a bike. It's not. It, that it's has not. not been our experience. Um, we've had a lot of challenges, but I know we're going to get into that now. Your question was about how the funding um, has worked. We, we are grateful for the funding. And we were able to put it to use to stand up a program. Um, it was beyond our capacity to get that program totally stood up between what was it, August the 26th and the beginning of open enrollment. Yeah. Um, but we did the best we could. We did a good job of um, getting running at least by the end of open enrollment. We've had a strong special enrollment period. And we're again, grateful for the increased funding um, for this next grant year coming into uh, what we anticipate will be the unwinding of the Medicaid public health emergency as well. So that took us in a perfect segue about onboarding. Oh my God, you said you all were Navigator grantees and you came back and you didn't just have to come in and ride a bike. Now you have to get in and ride a motorcycle because it started smooth and super fast for you all. Let me know what did that look like, finding navigators and, and being able to get the training done for the first year of the three years. Yeah, we were really lucky to have a few navigators come back, right? But most of those navigators took that awesome experience that they had um, gathered during those first three years of the grant and moved on to to other professions and didn't come back and join us in the navigator role again. Um, but we we had a lot of trouble hiring. Um, hiring navigators was challenging. That was not a challenge that was unique to us. Um, that okay. was a national um, challenge that uh, all sectors have experienced, right? Yes. 
Um, so getting the people with the right sorts of um, skills and um, interests hired was a big challenge. Getting those people up to speed through the navigator training over that hurdle of getting out into the community and confidently sharing the word about the, the type of services that they're providing and the health insurance options that are available. And then getting people over that additional hurdle of actually getting on the website, helping a person fill out the application, comparing marketplace plans, or navigating the Medicaid enrollment process was a huge challenge. Um, some of the things that we did, I've heard mentioned by other speakers, um, we created shadowing opportunities where we had people who had done this in the past. We tried to connect them with um, some of the newer navigators. Uh, we did some what I call compliance training. I, I tend to be a pretty boring guy. Um, so I call it a compliance yeah. training, but it could have just as easily been like a super fun learning how to do your job as a navigator training as well. Um, and actually for this coming year, we've um, developed an onboarding manual, which, which I really love and heard um, one of the speakers, I think from Mississippi, um, mention a similar thing. Okay, um, and in Ohio, um, especially, um, I know you said you all came back, um, your organization um, as um, former Navigator grantees, um, did you all have any challenges when it came back, like getting your um, your name back out there for that service again and getting that trust back from the uh, consumers you once helped before or new ones? Yeah, you know, we, I think, underestimated the um, challenge that that would be. I, I think we had hoped that uh, when we came back after, well, as a three or four years, that consumers who had worked with us in the past um, would come back, that that name recognition um, would be back, but but we we learned that that wasn't the case. Um, people who had worked with navigators either connected with agents or brokers or went through the re-enrollment process on their own, um, they did not simply line back up at our doors and wait for us. Um, we had a lot of success, though, with our public outreach, right? So um, we did a paid advertising campaign called Get Covered Ohio. Okay. Um, we printed marketing materials. We worked with our newspapers on earned media. And slowly but surely, that campaign started to drive people to our services and began increasing our numbers. But you know what? Just like I've heard from other people and we, when we experience in our first go around with this project, it's that word of mouth that matters most. It, it it's does. that trust that you're building with the consumers you help, the organizations that are making referrals to you, that's where um, we start to generate real uh, uh, meaningful reputation that brings people through our doors. That's gonna take time. Um, I, I heard Nina talk about being, you know, the Obamacare girl in her town and, and <laughs> West Virginia or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like I want to be the Obamacare dude in Westerville, Ohio, and yeah. we've got 47 other Obamacare people um, ready to help you, but it's going to take time. Okay, and so how do you think um, this past OE um, kind of went for you all, being that you back getting your feet wet back out here helping um, consumers again in the, all the different um, parts of, of the state that you are helping, how do you believe that that went with the enrollment side for you? Or your uh, or give me some of your best practices that you've learned from this last year. Yeah, so best practices, broad outreach, right? Getting our name out there broadly, <laughs> connecting with the consumers who come to mm -hmm. us and providing high quality service, right? Because that's right. what generates the return consumer. That's what generates those word of mouth referrals. Um, so we, we focus a lot on that. Um, I had so many thoughts as you were asking the question. I started, <laughs> can you remind me? Which exactly? Oh, the first one was like, how did you feel, you know, with the first yeah, year? How, oh, how did it go? Yeah. I, yeah. I, think, I think it went well. Um, we're Medicaid expansion state. All of our sub recipients are food banks. They are organizations that provide free uh, health care to or, um, people. They are community action organizations. We, like one of my uh, 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 navigators likes to say, we can get Medicaid enrollments in our state. And we do. And we did thousands um, 
this year. QHP enrollments were much harder for us to come by. Right. Uh, and, and that's where we really want to focus on helping our navigators be more confident, building that reputation as a um, provider who can, who can help you through that process. Um, and, and frankly, where we want to do better next week. My CMS project officer has never asked me if how Medicaid enrollments go. Um, they're frequently asking me about QHP enrollments. And uh, again, we got to do better. Okay, and um, for here in the great state of Texas where we don't have Medicaid expansion, we will take a little bit of that. That We'll take a little bit of the, uh, the Medicaid side of it. Um, that's one thing that I'm like hoping, wishing, and praying. Probably for the last 10 years, I've been doing this from OE1 to now OE10. So being that the state of Texas, we don't have that. So a lot of times, I think with the QHPs, um, like you just stated, it is harder to get those numbers um, and op doing open enrollment. So I'm not going to talk about the uh, uh, my little best practices yet, but I'll give y'all a few of them. And you said outreach and education is one of the biggest things to focus on. You're most definitely correct, like getting your name back out. Um, for us, we still use those tactics. And another thing we use, partnership, partnership, partnership collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. So you talked about a few of your partners with that, and I'm glad you said that. Um, so one thing you wish you have known when we went back into the first year of this three-year grant, uh, tell me one thing you wish you've known um, when even hiring navigators or getting boots back on the ground for this that you will want to um, do. Well, I wish I would have known that the allure and the sort of, um, when we did the first year of the Navigator Grant, um, outreach and, you know, broad outreach was happening through earned media, right? And Obamacare was, right. the ACA um, mm -hmm. was a big, a big deal. And, you know, that website going down on day one, um, you know, like, Bad press, any press is, is press, right? Like, right. <laughs> whatever that saying <laughs> is. Like, um, the word was out, right? And navigators were a hot topic. And yeah. um, so, 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 so getting the word out about our services wasn't as difficult. So okay. what I wish I would have known is that we were going to face that challenge. And I wish I would have had a stronger focus on reaching to underserved and vulnerable populations to use CMS of language. Um, people with limited English proficiency, mm -hmm. people with limited access to or comfort with technology, um, people with other barriers to using healthcare.gov or otherwise engaging in the application process. Um, I wish I would have remembered that I really need to be focused on those populations um, with my outreach because they are more likely to accept the help of a navigator rather than go to an agent broker, go to healthcare.gov on their own, um, right. or otherwise get through the process. So I wish I would have remembered that coming in or known that going into this year. Yeah, and I agree with that too as well. Um, I just want to go back about the uh, one thing with the onboarding. Um, how do you know when you got a good navigator or someone who actually can do this work, like with the onboarding and hiring navigators, how do you choose like what who's fit for this work? Yeah, so we put together a sample job description for our consortium. Of course, mm -hmm. these organizations do all the hiring and managing of the individuals, but we put together um, a quick, you know, basic job description, people who are self-motivated, problem solvers excellent communicators that have a desire to learn because you know you gotta you gotta have a deep knowledge um and you have to pick up the deep knowledge of policy regulation yes. rules you have to be willing to learn about other community resources that are available like for those people that you can't get on health coverage how do you know where to send them um to get access to health care um, people who communicate and work effectively with other community-based organizations, partners, people who are comfortable with technology, particularly um, in this environment where we're doing a lot of virtual outreach. Um, and you know what? People that care, 
people that want to work through what is often a really complex process. Exactly. Getting people enrolled, people who aren't frustrated by long wait times at the Department of Medicaid, people who can um, help folks read complicated notices or long notices and understand what it boils down to. What's the net net? As another one of my navigators often says, what's the net net of what I've got to do to get on coverage? Um, exactly. So I think those are those pretty well um, summarize the qualities that we look for in a good navigator. So, um, so what do you, what would you tell uh, a new assister or a new navigator um, who's coming in to work with your organizations? Um, besides, you've already did your onboarding, you brought them in. What would be some advice do you like give them preparing for open enrollment? Do as much as you can to learn and start doing the work. That's it's it. It's through the doing that you will build the experience and the knowledge that you need. And then surround yourself with people that you can ask questions of and mm -hmm. that will give you good answers. Um, one of the things that we, we really miss out on in the state of Ohio with our major, uh, you know, our, the, there being so few navigators um, and then expanding to so many navigators um, is that there's not a whole lot of those mentor mentee relationships, but we've right. done our best to try and create them. And somebody mm -hmm. in one of the earlier sessions said, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Um, and that, that I think is such an important thing. You can learn a whole lot from the navigator training, from the like beyond the basics webinars, the CMS webinars, yeah. and those are critical. But you also gotta be willing to step out, try, be willing to fail and ask questions along the way. Wow, now that's great. Like that's that, I mean, you said it all. And like I always tell our navigators here at Change Happens, you can't learn how to navigate until you navigate. Uh, I love that. <laughs> that's I'm, I'm really true. That. That's good. Totally, I'm that. <laughs> yeah, you can't navigate until you navigate as well as don't make up information. It's better to say, I don't know, than to make up something. So learn your craft. So that's something we always say here too, but you're right. You can't navigate until you navigate. So that's something we actually Don't make stuff up. That, that's an important qualifier. Don't make it up though. Don't make it up. Do not make it up. And like you said, that mentorship for other um, assisters to have someone else to call. A lot of times you're at change happens. We have in, in the state of Texas, uh, with our consortium that we have, we have new navigators who are able to call us. Some of the navigators who stayed for those, uh, we were only had two, two navigator grantees in the great state of Texas, but they were able to call us and have that dialogue, how to do this, how to get through your processes with no issues. So our thing is, it's, it's always good. So, and even with this unwinding, um, having partners with that too, and getting the information, like you just said, read, 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 and learn, 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 and be willing to learn. Okay, one more thing. Why do you think this work, or why is this so important, what we do here um, as Navigator grantees that serves the community that we serve? So back in 2009, 2010, when they were working to pass the Affordable Care Act, um, mm -hmm. I saw an, an opportunity for people who had to go without um, to, to have access to health care. Um, I had a, a personal health scare when I was 25 and, and was one of the people who um, didn't have access to health insurance through traditional means. And if it wasn't for the support of my um, family, um, I would have been put into huge, huge, huge medical debt. Um, fortunately, I got better. I avoided that medical debt and um, saw in the ACA an opportunity um, for other people not to be in that situation. I think what the first 10 years of our experience with the ACA has shown us is that even with access, mm -hmm. first, there are populations that still have not been um, granted access through our system. And second, 
even with access being expanded so much as it was by the ACA, people still aren't getting coverage for reasons that are fixable, right? Yeah. We can help you get through the process of filling out the application. We can help you build your health insurance literacy to a point where you don't feel scared about enrolling or, or paying a bill for this. Um, we can help you get over those hurdles. Um, and that's why it's so important that we be available. Um, it's not a build it and they will come thing. Wow. It's a build it, fix it, help them over the hurdles, and then maybe we'll get closer to the ideal that the ACA sort of um, set out for us. Yeah, and that's exactly. Um, and thanks for sharing that. Um, like why I'll, I always talk about young invisibles, it's always good to have a story. Um, um, I myself too, and the work that we do here, I find it so important. And like I always tell my team in meetings, we still get to do this work. It's never as if this is so much bottled down things. It's an honor to go and serve the communities that we serve. And I also it's an honor to see someone light, face light up when they're able to get access to coverage. But even so, it surprises me, like you just stated, that some people still don't know what they're eligible for. Some people have no clue still. So our efforts, and I thank you and I applaud you all there in Ohio for continually to do this work and to continually, you know, just help others get to the point where you were able to get to um, with your health care as well and educating the communities that we serve. Um, in the other segment, they were talking about uh, after serving someone, how do they know how to get to the doctor or different things like that. In my head, I was like, duh, it's a no brainer. This is part of our job. But that's a good question. Most people need to know it is a coverage to care portion to this. So in the midst of that, um, are you all um, year round, um, Alpha year round navigator services as well? Okay. Yeah, so you most definitely know about the coverage to care and the yeah. special enrollment. Yeah. That's it. That's a that's a lot of the work that we do, right? Is um, helping people who maybe have health insurance but aren't able to get to the doctor or are afraid to go to the doctor because of past experiences with you know really high medical bills. It's a lot of the work that we do. Yeah, and 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 just with your navigators, do they find it a struggle? Um, with being able to um, go, go to that coverage to care portion, um, are people coming back for that, um, that extra help, that post enrollment help? That's what I'm talking about. Do they, do you get a lot of that? Yeah, we do, we do. Our navigators are great at developing relationships. And I think, you know, if you can let me go back to that other question about qualities of a great navigator, feeling, being willing and able to develop relationships with people that you're helping, um, so that there's a level of comfort and they can come back and ask questions along the way. Um, many of our navigator subgrantees also provide healthcare services. So we have an FQHC, um, we have an organization that provides free dental and vision and, and other services to people. Um, so for some of our organizations, it's baked into the work that they do other, every day. Um, for others, it's, it's more of a, a a task of learning the resources that are available in the community and being able to point people to them when they need that service. Yeah, and both of those approaches are are not small feats or small things. Both having both of those processes is awesome. So I see why you all are doing well. Uh, and I'm looking forward to OETN. Uh, and you guys have got your feedback wet. And it sounds like you know you guys are, are prepared and ready. Um, to get out there again and navigate to be a navigator. <laughs> yeah. just keep you know, we felt like we were catching up um, for a good part of this year. Yes. And now we've got our feet under us and, and we're feeling ready to go um, in this, this open enrollment period. I think, you know, with the unwinding too, um, that's been something, the unwinding of the Medicaid public or the COVID-19 public health emergency Mm -hmm. And the fact that a lot of people might lose Medicaid um, after that emergency ends, um, we, uh, so 
sorry, Stacy for president. Yes, I am. <laughs> you are you are the ticket I'm voting for. Uh, we are really excited about the opportunity to be there for people um, who for maybe years haven't needed uh, to look for health insurance. Um, we are also nervous about the demand that that could place on us and yeah. the potential timing and overlap um, with open enrollment and just the level of confusion that might exist, not only among consumers, but among providers, among um, Medicaid managed care organizations and other entities that are, um, I guess, awaiting uh, words right. for when this all happens. And, and that was a word of wisdom, actually. I hope everyone heard that. Like we're anticipating, we're excited and we're waiting for them, but we also know that they could call an overwhelming portion too to the navigators um, and the people who are doing this work. So that was really wise to say like, you still have to be a little nervous as well because there is about to be something amazing about to happen, but also it's about to be something overwhelming um, that could happen. So we're looking to for the um, unwinding actually here at Change Happens, we actually just became a grantee for coverage, covered, um, coverage and kids to care. So we've got that grant, Connecting Kids to Care grant as well. So we're doing the chip and Medicaid as well. So we know on both ends what that can happen. So Connecting Kids with Care as well as the marketplace. So we're getting like you all in Ohio, we're putting all these things together. And like you said, you have to have different doors. Uh, and different parts, like it, are you referring or can I take you straight through one door and you get everything, but it's always good to have those in your arsenal. So um, for us, even coming back with the um, grant and the funding getting bigger, we had to bring what? More people in to cover more bases. So I, some of the things that you're saying, it's all around. It's not just um, people who just got back. Us, we can say as being a grantee since the beginning, we've dealt with it too, bringing in new navigators and because we're covering new grounds, making sure you have the right subcontractors that are boots on the ground and they're ready and they have the same mission um, that you all have. So when hire your subcontractors uh, or bringing them on um, to help you all do this work, um, did you find that being difficult and having people who are excited like you all were to get into this work? Yeah, you know, all of our subcontractors were excited to get into the work. Some of them were um, organizations that had done the work previously, um, and so brought a level of knowledge and sort of understanding of the work and some of those partnerships into the work, and others mm -hmm. were totally new um, and had, had, I think, what they would call sort of a a rocky onboarding period, but got their their feet under them and and were ready to go and are particularly excited for year two and that kind of opportunity to um, mature into the work in in the second year. I want to go back to the PAG unwinding and talk about one of the things that we're doing and that's working with the Department of Medicaid to get onto notices that are going to people who are mm -hmm. determined ineligible for Medicaid and who may eventually be terminated from Medicaid. Yeah. Um, and then we're asking all of our subcontractors to go out and develop relationships with the County Department of Job and Family Services offices, which are basically the local HHS contact mm -hmm. um, that determine eligibility for Medicaid here in the state of Ohio. Um, and that's great in preparing for the Medicaid BHG unwinding. It's also yeah. been really critical for us as new, right, like returning resources in the community um, yeah. so that those health and human services offices know that navigators are available and that when their overwhelmed casework staff encounters a person who's not eligible for Medicaid, they can make a warm handoff to a navigator who might be able to help them get enrolled in marketplace coverage. Mm -hmm. So not only for that value as THE unwinding preparation, right. but also for that partnership building and that really, really key part of um, being a successful new navigator grantee. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? I agree with you because for the whole 10 years we've been doing this, we have actually been what we call here community partners with HHS. 
So we have always had that certification that we know the work as well as have that relationship. Like you said, being a navigator, that's one of the greatest things that you must have knowing how to build good relationships, not just with um, your co uh, consumers or your community, but also with your partners, being a good partner with that. So you are most definitely right. And I agree with you wholeheartedly, not as if I would not, but I agree with you because we are partners in this work together. You're way there in Ohio, I'm here in Texas, but we need each other's experience. We need each other's um, connections to know how to service each one of our communities the correct way. Um, I think someone was saying something about um, how to make the, um, it comfortable. How did you make your um, navigators comfortable or talk about, talking about premiums and the cost of premiums and deductibles and co-pays and things like that? So I think the best thing that we've done is point people to resources for understanding, right? Like the Beyond the Basics, webinars, um, the Young Invincibles national um, calls. We have created what we have called an Ohio All Assister Alliance, where we have regular calls with the Navigator grantees, as well as um, the CDOs from throughout the state, um, where they can sort of share best practices and okay. learn from one another. Um, that's not a secret. It's something other people have talked a lot about that I think has a lot of value. Um, and then the other thing we've done is, is gone out and sat with people and shadowed, right? So um, I've, I've gone out and done appointments with individuals um, sitting next to navigators who are brand new. And I think just seeing that process of asking a person, what are your needs in health insurance? And then exactly. explaining how a co-payment, a deductible, your co-insurance how all that works in and how it relates to exactly what your needs are related to health insurance has been the best teaching tool that there is. Um, so when it comes to how we get our navigators comfortable talking about it, encourage, giving them the resources to understand, encouraging them to go out and try and then letting them see it happen um, in real time with them side by side. Yeah. So um, if I wanted, I would share like what um, we we're talking about the premiums and um, I always let our navigators know, let your consumer know if no one else is here to help, we're here to help you through this process. When we're talking about premiums and deductibles, we want the best for you, but we want you to also to want the best for you as well. And when we're talking about premiums and, and what they need, uh, what type of care they need, we always let them know up front too about that. You want the best care for yourself as well. So we kind of teach them to advocate for themselves to get the best care that's being offered. So when we're talking about premium costs, we all we let them know about everything that's going on, even when we have um, the special enrollment or with the uh, American uh, Rescue Plan on how subsidies are being offered to help you more um, for these next three years. We let them know that, be, but we also let them see on uh, way on the side of just being transparent. Uh, when it comes to premium care. A lot of people love what we talk about as navigators because we're going to tell you what sometimes, because we don't work off commission. So at the end of the day, I always let them know we do not have to eat off of whatever you choose in a plan. Um, my navigators think that is so funny. And I told them I used to be a, a life insurance and a health insurance agent before becoming a navigator. So I can talk from this chair and know that, hey, where I'm not depending on you at the end of the day, when you choose your healthcare plan, whether I'm gonna pay my bills or I'm gonna eat, my job is today, I work for you. So no matter what questions you have about premiums, deductibles, or co-pays or co-insurance, I'm here to be the unbiased one to give you true information that will help you be educated and to help you get the health plan that you need as well as be able to afford it throughout the whole year. So that's why I, I try to give them tools and my navigators always thank, thank me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I was nervous and they were wanted something they could afford. And I said, and your job is to make sure that they get what they're asking for. 
but to be transparent enough, if I need more care than somebody else, my plan won't look like my sister's plan who sent me here. Yep. Your household don't look like your sister's house. So that's some of the things we try to tell people because that word of mouth can be great, but it could also get you a little bit. Yeah. Someone want to know why my plan don't look like their plan? Because your household is so unique and dynamic and it don't look like their household. Yeah. yeah, I think you hit on something that's really important that we found in, in reestablishing ourselves as navigators in communities, presenting ourselves as an unbiased sort of source of information. Yes. Right. Um, people with low income, people who are part of vulnerable populations are being sold on things all the time. Yes. And um, I think, you know, organizations are rightfully wary when you come and say, hey, I'd like to help the people that you help sign up for health insurance. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you might you might have some uh, self interest here. So we always lead with we provide free, unbiased assistance to people. We are federally funded, certified, and licensed by the state of Ohio to provide this information to your consumers free of charge. Um, and I think that kind of brings down some of the guard and opens up the ears for partnerships. Exactly. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, I saw a question in here um, that they were asking about um, calling in the 1-800 number, the national number, and having to wait. Um, someone answered it. So thank you, uh, Maggie, for answering that. Yes, I tell my navigators, always use your resources. That Marketplace of Systems direct line will save you heartache as well as your consumer's frustration. So that I agree with that as well. Zach, I think we've had too much fun and I think our time is almost over. Everyone, anyone has any more questions for Zach and I, we can most definitely answer them. We see them coming in the chat. Um, and thank you for all of our um, fellow um, servers that's in the chat who's helping us answer these questions as well. Thank you so very much. Cause Zach and I, I think we're having a lot of fun. together. We do have a couple more questions if you all are ready. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so, well, for one, y'all are getting a lot of love in the chat for your energy. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so one, you all talked about mentoring and maybe spending time, um, you know, with your new navigators working with consumers. What do you, how does a new navigator even start? Like first consumer sits down at their desk. Uh, what, what do you do? What do you say? Uh, first consumer will not sit down at a brand new navigator's desk um, here at Change Happens. They will actually probably sit down with one of our seasoned navigators and a new navigator will sit on the side of them, introduce themselves as training, their training. So they at least need to do three applications by being shadowing someone first. Because you need to learn the lingo. You need to learn how to talk to people in layman's terms and to help them the best. And then after they shadowing, they have to do two with the shadowing. Shadowing or the shadow <laughs> with the um, season navigator to see. So that's like five different appointments that that new navigator will go through. So we can make sure that they're comfortable enough to talk to the communities that we serve. So that's what that looks like for us, being able to have at least five. And if you need more, then they get the honor to go out with me. And then I can do the shadowing and I can find out, you know, what's that glitch or what's happening with them when they're out in the field. And I'm here to help to make sure at the end of the day that my navigator get the training, but as well as our consumers get the services that they need. And they trust us to do what we're supposed to do and what we said we're going to do. I want that. We, oh. we... <laughs> Um, unfortunately, we, we weren't able to provide that um, to, to all of our new navigators, um, you know, going from having just a couple of navigators who returned up to 47, you know, that was CMS's clear objective um, to get the navigators out into the field as quickly as possible. Um, and I think that created some angst, some un completely understandable angst among navigators. Um, so we had to rely on that. You navigate when you navigate. Um, and like Stacy said, I, I love that and I'm going to use that. You can't navigate until you navigate. Um, 
now that we have the opportunity or we have more seasoned navigators yeah. on the program, um, we're going to start doing that, Stacy. So if any of our navigators are on the line, know that know that that policy is now in force. The Ohio That's Association it. of Green Banks. That's it. Thank me later, navigators. <laughs> Okay, another question. How long do you think it takes to get comfortable working with consumers? Like if you're a newbie, I know you go through the shadowing process, but it's still probably kind of scary to be like flying solo. So what do you think it, how long do you think it takes for someone to, a new navigator to, to really be confident when they go into an appointment? I think it's go ahead, Zach. Hard. Go ahead. I think it depends. Many of the navigators that we brought on board have been helping people with SNAP applications, Medicaid applications, heating applications, um, applications for pre prescription affordability programs. Um, for those individuals, becoming comfortable with the work of a navigator um, is it's a fairly easy transition, um, especially once they, they've got some familiarity with the marketplace, maybe through window shopping or going through um, one one or two applications with with an individual. Um, for people who have not done this sort of work, there's a much steeper learning curve, um, and and I would say that it takes it takes a couple of months before people are comfortable. But Stacey, I'm 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 excited to hear your brilliance on this. I'm saying ditto to okay. what you just said, <laughs> and we try to always find people who already have their boots on. So we try not to find someone who uh, will come from slippers to boots. So if they already have their boots on, same thing that just said, you've already been doing outreach work. You've already been helping the community, like our community health workers. We love to hire them. We love to hire um, people that who's worked for organization who already is doing the work, who's been out here serving their community already, even someone in their church who volunteered to help their church sign up people uh, with different um, products and different um, services. We want to make sure that those are the people that we're letting know, hey, we can use you as a navigator to continually to serve the community you've already been serving, but just having an extra tool. So Zach, I agree. Yes, get people who already got their boots on, even though if their boots wasn't on the ground as a navigator, now it can be. Yep. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question. Um, Hang on, let me see here. Um, have you all had success working with school systems? Um, have you done any outreach or partnership with your local schools to, to help get in with, with folks who might need coverage there? I'll say yes. We have one, I'm sure Zach has too, yes always going to the counselors or that resource person at the school, um, being a part of the wraparound service um, specialists as well as communities and schools that was uh, one of the programs here in Houston. So I say yes, and your nurses, always making sure at the beginning of open enrollment that you reintroduce yourself and someone probably rolling their eyes like, I know you lady, I've been knowing you for over 10 years, but I always reintroduce myself and our program and the services that we have for the families they serve. I digress to that. Honestly, schools have not been a big part of our outreach. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll give a reason which might sound like an excuse, we got the grant on August 26th, which is well beyond the start date for most schools. And uh, frankly, um, we're pursuing other avenues outreach like the HHS offices, um, like the state agencies, um, like the libraries um, and other, I think, uh, less institutional sorts of outreach. But um, yeah, sounds like a great opportunity for us. Yeah, and I'm I'm here to say that I can put a stamp on that because it's so many meet the teacher tonight, so many fall festivals that's going on, so many uh, open houses. Because after the first month of school starting, open houses start. So even though after you all have that month and you got to get people trained, they're always having things going on at the school, especially since COVID nineteen. You get lots of different events from that, so that actually helps. And if you're nice to the principal, they will do a call out for you about your navigator services to their families. 
I would be remiss if I didn't mention also the reaching out to universities, colleges, and particularly community colleges. Yes. They love to have you there. Lots of Medicaid applications, but um, they love outreach. They do. <laughs> uh, so great. Thank you so much. Um, lots of thank yous in the chat to you guys as well. Uh, you've really brought the energy. Um, and just thank you so much for this engaging conversation. Really appreciate you both. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and with that, we have one more message that we wanna share with you all before we wrap up for the day. Um, if we can get that up. Um, here we go. Hello, Young Invincibles. I am CMS Administrator Chiquita brooks Lashore. I can't be there with you in person but I didn't want to miss this opportunity to send you my best as we get close to open enrollment period 10. Let me start with my appreciation for the work you do. It's thanks to your leadership, dedication, and enthusiasm that millions of people have access to the healthcare they need to thrive. Your efforts are helping people to get vaccinated, find help when they're feeling anxious or sad, or have peace of mind if they're hospitalized. I think you call it healthy adulting. I believe strongly that healthy adulting is a basic human right, and I am thrilled to have all of you alongside of us at CMS as we work to defend that right. Our partnership with you is as fundamental to our mission as our efforts to advance health equity, expand access, and drive innovation. Your voices make our program stronger. I am proud of how much we learned and have grown together over the past nine open enrollment periods, thanks to you. I am truly excited for the open enrollment period 10. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, people can continue to afford the high quality healthcare they need to thrive in 2023 and beyond. The new legislation builds on the Biden-Harris administration's efforts to meaningfully lower healthcare costs for people across the country. The new law, paired with your incredible work to reach out and enroll young adults, brings us all closer to reaching our collective mission of better health for all people. Your work to meet people where they live, work, and play, and to add a human touch to the open enrollment process will help hard to reach and historically underinsured communities get signed up. And you'll help them to stay safe, feel healthy and supported, and have the peace of mind that healthcare coverage brings. I'll close as I opened with my sincere thanks for everything you do. Have a great summit. We'll talk again very soon. Everyone, I was waiting for those sirens to pass. Welcome to DC. <laughs> okay, with that, um, that's a wrap for day one, everyone. Um, I hope everyone's feeling, uh, you know, a little more jazz than when we started this morning. We we really got rolling, and of course, you know, Stacy and Zach really brought that energy as well. Um, you know, we've heard from some amazingly talented and experienced assisters today who were so kind to share their perspectives with us. Um, and if you're not jazz, you definitely will be by the end of tomorrow. We've got some policy deep dives for you. We're going to be talking about um, the Medicaid unwinding that's coming up at some point. Um, we'll be talking about reaching uh, those folks who, um, you know, experience greater barriers to getting coverage. Um, and we'll do, be doing some deep dives into the enrollment process, basically what you need to know um, going into open enrollment if you're doing enrollment. So we also have a really good opening session tomorrow, if I do say so myself, some really amazing speakers. So please don't miss those. Um, really excited to have them on board, um, some incredible healthcare champions. So um, again, I just wanted to say that we're thinking of our friends down in Florida, um, lots of, of great partners down there, lots of really experienced navigators doing great work, and we hope that you're all able to be safe. Um, so with that, Thank you again for spending your time with us this afternoon or this morning, um, and we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.